Hi guys, uh, today uh, we're going to be trying something new. Uh, my name is Rob Rossi. Uh, I'm here today with John Mazzano, our uh, senior coach, the gaffer of uh, FC Bolling Lions. We uh, have got strange times uh, recent uh, recently and obviously uh, we need solutions how we can communicate with our members, our, uh, our club in general. John, welcome. I thought today we might have a conversation, obviously a conversation about football. Uh, I think there's been enough talk about everything else, but yep. uh, everybody's missing football and the community wants to hear from you. I'm sure uh, you've been in touch with your players and your team, but you know there's quite a few players at FC Bulling Lions these days, so I think they'd love to hear from you as well. Yeah, I'm happy to have, I'm happy to have the chat, Rob. Beautiful. Uh, it's Not great. doing anything else. <laughs> exactly. So uh, let's uh, let's see what I thought we might do. Just uh, we try and keep it as natural as possible, John. But uh, just maybe I've obviously prepared a couple of questions that uh, we've uh, outlined here, and so maybe we can just sort of encompass quite a few different uh, discussion points and uh, about NPL and football in general. So, Johnny, uh, you've been with the club for four years now, two and a half years as our senior coach. <laughs> when our club is, you know, a history of over 50 years and uh, we're very proud uh, Italian-based club. Uh, but uh, how are you enjoying uh, FC Bowling Lions, John? Uh, Rob, I, uh, I love it. I love it at the club. I, um, I, I've made a lot of friends at the club. It's, it's a beautiful club. Uh, I, I love the club. It, it's my home now. And um, everything I do is... Uh, is for the betterment of the club. So everything that we want to try and achieve, um, it's always bearing in mind that the, the club is is number one, first and foremost. But um, I think the most important thing is that I've made a lot of friends at the club. You know, I, I know a lot of people there now and, and, and everyone's made me feel welcome and at home. Uh, <clears throat> you, you obviously have to earn your stripes. You know, and in, in the beginning, it was a little bit tough, but... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I, I see this as just the beginning, really. Yeah, look, uh, and, uh, you know, as a, a club man myself, we're, we're excited to have you on board and, you know, we're starting to get some continuity and, you know, we can start to see a real shift in, um, you know, the what we're really trying to achieve and how football has become, you know, so important in these times, John. You know, we, we notice that, you know, it's, uh, I believe it's the most important of all the unimportant things in life. And, you know, this is proved to be the case in these conditions. I find myself driving past the club gates, uh, you know, five minutes out of uh, detour from home, but I just need to drive past and make sure that uh, yeah. you know, it's still there. So, yeah, it has a... Yeah, well, so with, this... This whole, with this whole COVID-19, um, the first things that shut down was non-essential things. Mm. But we don't realise how essential this non-essential thing was oh well especially to the you know our, the psychological impact it's having uh, on all of us so you know if we lead to that isolation period or this isolation that we're in uh, what uh, what have you been thinking about or what uh, what have you been focusing on during this period well what, well, what have i not been thinking about um i think uh I think the COVID, this, this whole isolation brings a, a level of restlessness um, and dullness that we, that we experience sometimes on very, you know, some, some more than others. Um, and how we get beyond that, that kind of restlessness and that dullness in, in, in this kind of space doing nothing. One of the things that, that, that I've realised in this time is the things that are really important to me, uh, like, you know, my family, my friends. Spending the time with my family has been fantastic. But missing my friends, not being able to have that interaction with them, that, you know, that, that hug or that, or that kiss or that, um, that, that show of affection. Um, and being in company of the people that, that you enjoy being in company of, you know, the football, the football fraternity, you're a, your players, your your club, all these things, you know, being in isolation just makes you think how important these things really were to me. And and, and I hope that people realise that um, uh, when this is all over, 
they they tackle these things with you know like uh, in a sense how can I how can I explain it? like um, no, okay. grab a, a hold of it you grab yeah. a hold of it yeah you grab a, a hold of it and you yeah you grab a hold of it and you don't let it go yeah basically you make the most of it yeah correct and and I think too you know over the years you find yourself you get caught up in the you know the the smaller things that you realise now just aren't that important and. You know, like you said, that what's important is the fact that we've got such a great club and we've got such amazing people at the club, you know, all the way from our president all the way down to the, you know, to the the kids who walk through the gates and run around on the Sunday morning yeah. waiting to, you know, kick a goal. So there are quite a few different um, parts of the club and you do miss them. I mean, I agree, John, I and mean, you're right, you know. I think, you know, we'll, we'll be looking at this time in when we reflect and say, you know, well, we've got something really good here and we should really protect it and, you know, grow it so everybody can experience it. So, yeah, look, I, I agree 100%, John. We take um, things for granted. And I think the football world, uh, especially in Australia, is is very, um, uh, you know, they is, is a prime example of that. Mm. We we have something, yet we, we talk it down. You know, we, we all think that we know best and we all think that we know better than the next person. We all trick ourselves to believing that, well, I'm more important than this and, and I don't need this in my life, whereas it's completely the opposite. You know, we, we need to embrace what we have and respect what we have and, um, and we need to really not take it for granted because there you go. In one fell swoop, it got taken away from us and, and, and now we're all crying. Yeah. Oh, and agreed, you know, like we've been, anybody who's, you know, we've got a lot of time to be on our devices and internet and social media and, you know, you can see the impact that it's had across all the clubs, even the community clubs based, you know, on the other side of Australia. We're all feeling the same um, losses in having this taken away from us. So, yeah, we agree 100%, you know, and, and like us, you know, there's quite a few proud and... Uh, passionate people and you know sometimes we don't always get along with them but you know something rings true like you said there john that uh, we all we all need football and we all love it. you know we can't wait yeah. to see that ball roll on the park again that's for sure no so, I, mean, I tell it i'll oh, go ahead no no go go john sorry no don't well i was I, I i tell the boys you know i tell i tell my players that they need to learn how to respect the game and i don't think that we uh you know, in general, football, you know, in Australia, I don't think in general we do that well. Respect the game. Um, because the game, fo football doesn't owe us anything. Football doesn't, it doesn't owe us anything. So if, if you respect it, if you respect it and you put your effort in and, and you enjoy it and you treat it the way it's supposed to be treated, um, you might get something out of it. You might, you just might. But if you don't, if you don't respect the game, then the chances of you getting something out of the game is, is zero. You know, yeah, so I, I think this is a, this is an opportunity where it's like, did I respect it or did I not respect it? You know, and it got taken away from me. So what did I get out of it? You know, and I think a lot of people will be sitting there thinking, I should have done this and I should have done that and I should have said this. Good point. Yeah, I, I agree entirely, John. You, know, that you should always, um, you know, I think I've heard you mention, you should always... Uh, which rings true for it doesn't matter what what aspect of your life, but you should always live in the moment and then, you know, you'd be aware of your surroundings and you should embrace embrace what you have and, yeah, don't take it for granted, you know, whether that be family or football. So, 100%, yep. One of words, Johnny. So, uh, Johnny, uh, one of the things, you know, we talk about adversity and trauma and, you know, the how it galvanises groups and the effects it has on on groups, um, obviously this is going to be one of the biggest things or one of the biggest challenges the young players have had in their short careers. How do you see this or how, how is it going to affect the team and how do you, how are the boys going in general? What, what, are, you, what are you, what are you um, seeing? Yeah, like I keep on, I keep on hearing things, you know, I keep on hearing that, um, I keep on hearing people say that there's nothing that we can do. There's absolutely nothing that we can do. And to a certain degree, yeah, there's, there's a lot that we can't do. Um, I think the most important thing is to try and keep our, our minds clear, uh, first and foremost, and active in a way. 
Um, I, I'm not the greatest at it. God knows I've had my moments over these, uh, over these testing times. Um, but we just need that clarity. And um, I think when I look back at my childhood, and yes, and my adolescence, yes, there was times that, you know, I, I didn't play football. And I think about the things that I know about the game now and the, the knowledge I have of football now. And a lot of it was due to the football, the amount of football that I watched, that I read. Um, I would say a lot of more, most of it is based on that than actual playing the game, you know, actually taking the time to learn about it and really immersing myself in it. I'm not saying that, you know, we have to immerse ourselves in it, but, you know, in, in six months from 12 months from now or 18 months from now, we will forget, you know, especially young players, they'll yeah. forget what they went through. Yeah. Um, and as long as they, they can keep their minds active, learn football, talk about it, watch it um, in isolation. You know, we're not talking about life in general. We're just talking about football in isolation. Yeah. Um, then it's probably the only thing that, that we can do. And, and from there, you can branch off in different directions, you know, because you watch one clip, you like something from one clip, takes you to another, another clip or something along those lines. But definitely for our team, you know, a little bit older, senior football, I can sense some of them have switched off. We try and stay in touch uh, once a week or every now and again, or even if it's just a text message or a quick phone call. And I can sense that some of them have switched off. The majority are, are still trying to kind of uh, stay in touch and, and, and understand that there will be a season ahead of us and the goals are still there. So they just need to try and keep themselves focused. But I don't blame the boys for switching off. I don't blame them. I don't blame anyone really. You know, it's, uh, well, there's, it's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressures out there, and I mean, uh, a semi-professional. Everybody's got jobs. Everybody's got businesses. Yeah. So look, there's going to be obviously external pressures which people need to deal with first. So yeah, you can understand that. Yeah. And we um, if we if we um, if we understand that we that we're people first, yeah. and they've got all these external factors, then it would be irresponsible of me to say to my boys uh, from whenever it was from six weeks ago when we last played our game, you need to keep yourself fit and you need to keep yourself motivated when we don't even have uh, right now light at the end of the tunnel. Um, yeah. Keeping them motivated all this time with no real goal in mind. Um, I, I, I believe that it's, it's a dangerous thing when, you know, come kickoff time, come, you know, two months from now or whenever we can start training again, they'll be mentally exhausted you know yeah correct and i think that's important too because you know we need to understand you know where the mindset's going to be and i think you're right i think we're all we're almost all going week to week thinking well when is this deadline coming then i want to one of the comments we use is you know where's the where's the light at the end of the tunnel and is that light a locomotive coming directly towards us or is it is it actually a light we can see so yeah i think you're right i mean once that um once that date really is set by the uh, the powers that be up above us, I think too, yeah, a lot of people will, will quickly pivot and you know, they'll start to put perspective into it and say, hey, you know, we've got a job to do and I've watched you around the traps, Johnny, and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to um, get the boys re reinvigorated to focus on that first kickoff. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I think as a club we 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 laid the foundations a long time ago, Rob. So when the boys yeah. come back, uh, I think our our job will be very very minimal as far as getting them motivated again because we have got a great group of lads. We've we've you know we've spent the last two years trying to build this squad, um, and and not all of it is actually very minimal is based on their football ability. A lot of it is based on you know, what they are as a, as a person, first and foremost. So coming out of it, you know, I think that, you know, the, pre, the, the club should be very, very proud because they yeah. should know that when the boys come out, they'll, they'll be fine. They'll be, they'll be firing. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, and, and the club is, I mean, as an official or one of the officials around the club, you know, we're very proud of the fact that, you know, we're building more than just the footballers. We're building people. We've got, you know, young men who really, you know, 
fit the mould of what you know Benetton Club and FC Bulling Lions was uh, was formed on yeah, the foundations. Yeah, you're right, 100 percent, John. Uh, one of the things you know people talk about, uh, and if we go probably more into football, John, and you know I think we've spoken enough about this this uh, COVID. Um, one of the things uh, I know you've had uh, some great success as a player. Um, but what does it take or what does it take? What are the non-negotiables for an organisation or a, a club, a team to have success? Uh, that's a good question. I, I, success comes in, in many, many different ways, mm. Rob. For, for, for different clubs and different people, success is viewed in, in different ways. So what's successful for bowling lines might not be successful for for somebody else mm -hmm. um but success i think is um is uh, is a club that is aligned a club that is aligned from top to bottom uh it's aligned from top to bottom um and basically setting setting their foundation setting the 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 strategic plan where everybody everybody is pushing in the same direction yeah. understanding understanding that that there will be there will be uh, hiccups along the way understanding that there will be arguments and discussions along the way um, as there are in any team but as long as everyone is very aware of their strengths and their own jobs and their own roles within the organization um, and everyone is, you know, agrees on the on the certain goal, and everyone's going in the same direction. Then I think that that's the number one success criteria, if I have to be honest. Funny, it's funny you said that, John. Um, I just had a recollection of uh, one of the comments that was made by one of our founding members at the Veneto Club. So the Veneto Club was founded in 1967, and the then first president uh, was a guy by the name of David Barrow, who's the stadium's named after. And one of the comments that was made about uh, David Burrell was that he had the ability to make the committee all row in the same direction. So that was 50 years ago, John, and it sort of rings true today that uh, it doesn't matter what time or when in history you look back, I think that's 100% uh, correct. You know, if everybody's on the same page, you know, I know they're cliches, but uh, yeah, if you're on the same page, yeah, success comes, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it's I think the byproduct of the hard work and the planning. Absolutely, and you you were the one that told me not long ago that. I oh, don't listen to what I say, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not true, mate. When, not I, true. when I stand up in the change room, and I give my team talk, or my philosophy, or my idea, that's exactly what they are. They're my ideals. Um, and it might not be the ideals for the other 20 boys individually that I have in my change room. So how do I find their common goals and their ideas and how can I get them to buy in to what our goal is as a club and, and that is to win and get promoted and be as successful as we possibly can. So... And, and I think that that's a top-down approach. It can't be a bottom-up approach. It needs to be a top-down approach. Correct. Yeah, and, and correct, John. I mean, you know, we see the wonderful things. You know, we talk about our club and we talk about, you know, our president, uh, Lou Kremer, Vice President Eugene. You know, we, we, we see a bunch of guys that exactly do that. You know, they plan and we, we all plan and we plan to, to create an environment where we can then get success you know, whether it be on the football pitch or, you know, even in our tennis, in our tennis uh, club or our, uh, you know, our gymnasium or the bocce, you know, we won the championships there with Sonia. She does a great job. So, yeah, look, and uh, it's amazing because we all really are on the same page and we all roll in the same direction. So, I mean, this is just a little hiccup this time. The Veneto Club was, uh, has been was here 50 years ago and it'll be here for another 50 years, that's for sure. Absolutely. Good points. Um, so one of the, um, obviously, we played our first game, FFA Cup, just before the, the lockdown. 
you know, as a, we, we, we played behind closed doors. There was no fans. You know, the environment was different. I mean, uh, I was there and even, I, you know, I asked a couple of the lads, you know, what, how they, they saw it and they just thought, geez, it was like, a, it was strange because we know the game was so important, but yet there was no fans. And, you know, the FFA Cup always conjures great passion because it's a, uh, it's a must win game. There's no next week. Yeah. So uh, we started the season really with that, with your new 2020 squad. How would you describe or, you know, how would you describe the team now? What, what have you seen on the pitch? Uh, I know it was a, a long pre-season for us. Yeah. But what, what do you see? Tell us. What? Don't well, give away too many secrets because I don't know how many of our uh, opposition will be watching this, but, you know, oh, I'm sure look, that... If, if, there, if there is opposition watching, welcome. I hope you're all well That's and I hope you're all yes. safe. Um, our, our game was live streamed on Facebook, so you can watch... Whatever many times as you want. Anytime you want. Right? <laughs> I've watched it a few times myself. So, <laughs> um, now nah, look, um, I, I, I finally feel like we're, we're we're bearing the fruits of uh, you know what we tried to achieve two years ago, like what we started two years ago. Uh, we have we have the foundations in our team now of you know technical ability, tactical ability, and physical ability. Um, and more importantly, e emotional ability. And when I talk about emotional ability, I talk about a, a change room full of full of men who have who are very self aware, self aware of their strengths, their weaknesses, what they're good at, what they're not good at, their ability. Uh, with a change room full of uh, people who have captain previous clubs, won things at other clubs, being the best players of the leagues at other clubs. Um, so I, I, I see, I'm very proud of our team. I'm very proud of our boys. Um, we've got a really good camaraderie there and and um, I feel that there's a connection there. It takes a little while to, to create that connection, but there is a connection there between players, between coaching staff and players, between my coaching staff. Um, and we were finally seeing something, you know, in our first game there in the FFA Cup against Springbell White Eagles. We were finally seeing something. And it's come to a, a stop. But, but I take the positives and I think, well, you know, we got there. We can get there again. We can get there again. It, you know, it's just a little hiccup. But um, it's exciting. It's exciting. Like, you know, there's players in my team. I think every single player in my team excites me as a football coach in one way or another. In one way, or, you know, whether it's their physical ability, which I, I never had that physical ability. So I'm, you know, I, 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 I'm in total awe of that. Whether it's technical ability, um, you know, there's certain players in my team who I think technically could be playing in the A-League, no problem whatsoever. Uh, and on an emotional level, you know, I love seeing how the boys are, are dealing with all these challenges and how they all react differently and how some of them cope better than others. But, um, look, it's an exciting time. It really is an exciting time. And um, hopefully we can get back to it sooner rather than yeah. later. You made some valid points there. I mean, we've, uh, you've watched the social media pages of, you know, the bigger clubs, you know, around the world. And the players are all dealing with the same emotion. Uh, whether you're playing in, you know, the uh, Serie A or you're playing in the NPL in Victoria or yeah. you know, Tasmania, wherever it might be. Yeah. Um, you're right, Johnny. And, you know, these, these boys, you know, they, they've really come to, the, come to the party, I feel, too. That, uh, you know, and people say, oh, you know, it's, you know, you buy your premiership or you buy your championship. But, you know, we know at the club, you know, that it takes more than just, it's not just money. It's a getting a bunch of guys who are going to fit that mould and work together and and make something happen on the park. So it's good to hear, John, that, uh, you know, it's true. You know, people people think uh, these are short-term solutions and short-term visionaries who think, you know, we're going to do this in one year. And like we know at the club, and like, you know, you know it takes a long time to build successful teams on the park, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, you can buy, you can buy the league. I think at some stage, I mean, the, the, you know, but, and you get promoted, you know, but are you ready as a team and as a club for that next challenge? What, you know, what's, what's the plan? Okay. You've achieved your goal really, really quickly. 
without having the foundations in place, what's the next step? Whereas I feel, you know, we, we just missed out last year, but that's given us the resolve and, and, the, and, and, and the strength to prepare again. And when we do achieve our goal this year, we'll be much better headspace, much better preparation for the next challenge. Oh, 100%, John. And we see, you know, we see often the, you know, people talk about promotion, relegation. You see often too many times you'll see a, a club get promoted and then, then the next season they'll fall back. Um, you know, you'll see, you'll see that happen time and time again. And, you know, look, you're right. You've got to go back to your basics and make sure you've got the foundation right. So one of the things that, um, you know, we all saw on, well, I don't know if many of you saw on social media. I think you did, John. We talked about this. Um, how the uh, couple of the ex socceroos uh, probably a couple of your ex teammates there with um, Grella and uh, Vinny and yeah, Vinny, yeah. yeah. So um, we heard comments about what it takes and what's lacking in football, or you know, what what do you see, or what do you see these days? What, where do you see that we need to head in? You know, what what are you what were your comments on that on that interview? We don't have to go in detail about yeah. the interview. Some of our watchers here probably wouldn't have seen it, but. Yeah. It was a great show. It was a great show. I think I think it was uh, exactly that. First and foremost, it was a great show. Um, <clears throat> I think those discussions those discussions have been around for a very very long time, mm. and um, and to have the caliber of those boys uh, talk about those same issues live on our social platforms is fantastic. You know because um, you know they've achieved what they've achieved. And, and they can talk, you know, they can talk about it. What, um, what, what I think, what I think is lacking is, um, is, I, th I think is, is, is the, the, the will to want more and, and to be the passion to be the best. Uh, all these things are just, are just really, really, really lacking. You know, they, the boys touched the other night on, you know, workloads and, you know, they, they're not allowed to, you know, have their players, you know, stand back after training a lot of the times because they have to watch their workloads and, and, and little things like that. Well, you know, where, where does it say in the rule book that you, when, when you're at home, you can't keep the ball up against the wall 5 million times, you know, or yeah. get it up against the wall 5 million times. I mean, one of the things that is seriously lacking that I see is, you know, a first touch. You know, we, 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 we've spoken about a, a first touch, Rob, you and I. Uh, you know, Too many times, yeah. You know, a, a first touch. And what's, what's a good touch? What's a good first touch? What's a not good, you know, what's not a, a good first touch? Well, y your teammate's in a good position and, and you receive the ball and, and just that little, that little bubble is enough just to put you off, you know, for the opposition to come back around and, and for you to miss that chance or for you not to control that mm -hmm. ball. And, and and that's everywhere. That's everywhere. That's that's at every level, John. It's yeah, at every level. It's at every level. Yeah, correct. No, you see, you'll see it on the A League. You'll see it on the, on the A League. You'll see it in the EPL. And um, yeah, a first touch. You know, uh, thirty years ago when we were playing football, the first thing that I learned as a kid: your first touch, your first touch. If you don't have a first touch, how do you expect to play football? Mm. You know. Um, yet we see it at every level. So we could talk all day about these sorts of things, but you know, where's where's the drive? Where's the passion? You know, to 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 perfect that. You know, to to be in your backyard before school, after school, lunch times. You know, day and night. You know, that's I true. I mean, we and we find you know, I mean, as a father, I mean, you're a father, I'm a father. You know, we we see our children get distracted by you know other other aspects of life, you know, the social medias, the online games, the, you know, sitting in front of that uh, idiot box. Uh, it's something probably you probably didn't have. I mean, you had the idiot box, but you didn't have the distractions of the online world. So, you know, the, that generation was always outside kicking that ball. There was no such thing as workload. Yeah. Um, it was, it was so interesting. Quickly, so just quickly, right? Yeah. Um, we had Sunday morning at 10.30, on on uh, SBS, the World Game, we had the Serie A for one hour. Mm -hmm. Yet, yet we observed and watched and read and learned that much about football in our childhood. 
more than anyone you know could do in this generation and and how did we do it rob how how did we do it with with such little resources back then you know it's because that one game that we saw when napoli played ac milan at the san siro that one hour that we watched on Serie R, SBS on Sunday morning, we recorded it and probably watched it four million times. Put it on replay and then wind out the VHS recorder. That's it. That's what it was. 100%, John. 100%. Yeah, that definitely was. I think, too, I mean, uh, one of the other things they talked about was, you know, the how far away football is, um, Australian football is to the rest of the world. One of the things that I wanted to highlight with you, John, and just get your perspective on, how far do you think, uh, how do you see the NPL scene? You know, there's, there's a lot of talk about um, promotion, relegation, A-League, second division. I mean, we won't go into that today because that's a, mm-hmm. we could probably have another three hour video on that. Um, yeah. But what do you, how far do you see the gap between NPL and A-League? Give us your honest opinion. I mean, you, you've been a player at the highest level in yeah. Atlanta in Europe. Um, so what do, what do you see when you watch the two? I think um, maybe eight or nine years ago, the gap was pretty big. I, th- I think the gap was pretty big a few few years ago. I don't think it is as big now. Um, maybe the top four or five clubs, there is a little bit of a, a gap there between the top four or five clubs and the NPL. Um, but I still think that there's a gap. I still think that there's a gap. And, and, when I look at my team, I think technically and tactically, maybe not so much of a gap. I just think physically and 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 mentality wise is a little bit different. You know, you've got full time professionals, mm, really thing, yeah. sharp. You know, committing their kind of life to football, whereas you know our boys are part time, and you know maybe you've got other things going on in their lives. But um. But yeah, I, I do think that there's a little bit of a gap, not as much as there was a long time ago. And I think that really excites me as well because I think when when we do have these FFA Cup draws, I'm always hoping, for, I want an A-League club. I want yeah. an A-League club. You know, I want our boys to test themselves against the best in the country. Uh, but I think the NPL as a spectacle, in my, in my perspective, um, I, I enjoy watching that more. NPL 2, NPL... Um, I have an emotional connection with it. I know a lot of the boys that are in it. I know a lot of the coaches. I know a lot of the players. There's promotion. There's relegation. Um, it's exciting from day one right down to to the last day to the playoffs. Yeah. Um, I think the A League has lost a lot of a lot of that. It's lost a lot of that. It's true. I mean, one of the one of the funny comments uh, the big Baduka man said was. It was like watching, you know, it's a knockout. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I laughed for about five minutes and we spat out my yeah, trick when yeah. I heard him say that. Yeah, Victoria over there and you yeah. saw him over there waving the flag. <laughs> that, yeah, was, yeah. that was funny. Uh, yeah. uh, you know. um, but I, I think, you know, it, it actually made, it was a valid point. You know, when you, when you drill down, the reality is that, you know, I mean, I remember going last year to watch, um, you know, us in the playoff. We were one kick away, you know. It's that passion, that emotion, you know. The last ten minutes, the FFA Cup game, where we lost, you know, we lost on penalties. Sorry, John, I had to mention it. Yeah. But you know, it's 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 that emotion. It it brings that. You've got ninety minutes of a, a, a roller coaster of emotions, and that's what football should conjure. Yeah, it should conjure that. It 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 should have that. And you know, watching the young boys, the fans in the ground, bringing the drums and cheering. And you could see the emotion. You could see everybody lived that that moment together, and that's what it's about. I mean, that's what I see. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look, and it's good to know that you know. I, I think yeah, I agree. You know, we're trying to bridge the gap between A League, and hopefully, hopefully, it um, it sort of gives a pathway because I mean, cl- clubs like ours, John, they're really there to because we love the sport. You know, it's obviously you you don't get involved in any you know, NPL or any community club because you think there's a financial benefit. You know, we all do it because we love the club. You know, we want to see our boys, our juniors uh, and our girls at Pauline for that matter. You know, we want to see them succeed. We want to see, you know, the next Bresciano come along and play for Australia and and talk about his time at Pauline as uh, a great time. So, yeah, look, 
and that's why we do it. We do it because we love it. So, oh, yeah, well, that's, that's interesting, John. Yeah, it's a good perspective that, you know, the gap's still there, but we're trying to bridge it. Yeah. One of the, um, another thing, I just want to talk a little bit about your coaching. Um, yeah. You've got so many secrets in that, in your top pocket there. But uh, I've seen you around, I've seen you around the club, I've seen you operate, how you, you work, your magic, and I've seen how you interact with other coaches. I've seen how you interact with, you know, administrators. But uh, one of the things I, uh, I've observed is the way you sort of, you watch and you interact with the junior NPL, uh, whether they be boys or girls. Um, I've seen the way you sort of, uh, you interact with them and you keep a close eye, I know you keep a close eye on all the age groups. So what, how would you, what would you say to one of those young men or young girls out there who's now facing this isolation? You know, you talked about at home kicking a ball, but what do, how do you see it's going to affect or affect them long term? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I think for these young for these young kids, you know, long term, do they really think about long term? You know, they 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 may miss six months of football. It might take them another six months, you know, to to get up to speed again. You know, like it's not really a, a major 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 issue in these things, but. But what I would say is just keep your, keep your mind active, you know, keep watching the football, keep talking to your mates about the football, um, keep reading about football, you know, keep working on if you've got the ability to in your backyard or in your front yard or wherever it may be on, on your juggling, on your touch, on little games that you can play. Um, just, just know that at some stage, you know, you are going to get out of this and how do you want to come out of it? You know, yeah. like you, yeah. do you want to? Do you want your first kick of the ball at the Venator Club to to be? You know, in the tennis courts. <laughs> in the tennis courts, you know, which is then going to take you longer to get up to yeah. speed. Or do you want to think, okay, well, I just really need to work on my fitness now, and and um, and so forth. But what what the the young players of bullying should know of, of FC bullying lines should know is that I'm watching all of them. Mm. I'm watching all of them. I'm watching as far down as I possibly can um, because I, I want to bring the best players uh, to the senior team. And, and that's the harsh reality of it. You know, we, we might have 16, 17 players per age group, Rob, but we might only, by the time they come into the under twenties and then having a sniff, I mean, we only, we only promoted two players from the under twenties this year into our senior team, you know? Mm. So, um, the young players should know that I am watching them and I, I am getting to know them. And, and, and that's the whole idea that we can then produce our own, you know, but you know, producing your own is not a, you know, a two or three year plan. No. And, and we talk about it often, you know, and, and people have the, they're almost a little bit disillusioned with the fact they think that, you know, you start with 18 players in your under tens and all those 18 are going to be, yeah. in your senior group, you know, it, yeah. it, it's a pyramid effect, John, and you're right, you know, because there's so many different aspects, uh, you know, one of the things uh, I recall you know, Harry, Harry Bingham say to us, or say to me personally, he goes, Rob, it, it, uh, when, the, when a player turns 16, 17, 18, it gets too hard. Yeah. So, you know, that, yeah. and he would refer to the fact that, you know, it's easier to stay at home and on the couch, it's easier to go out with your mates, it's easier to go night clubbing or it's easier to get yourself a girlfriend and take it easy. Yeah. And it's hard to, to focus and take the next step to that senior breakthrough. So, yeah. and, it's it's very because, and it's hard because of the environment that we create for them at junior level, you know? Um, and this is what some of the boys talked about it the other night. Um, you know, we, we pay big fees for our children to play NPL football. Right. So as coaches and as a club, we also have that responsibility to give them a, a product, yeah, to give them a service. Right. And, and that service might be, uh, well, they think, parents might think that that service may be equal game time and, 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 and little things like that. Well, equal game time, kind of, I get it because we're playing, you know, we're paying a lot of money for our fees. But where does that, where does that get your child when, you know, from, the, from, from under 15s to under 16s, there's only six, of, six spots available, you know, and the other 11 need to be turned away. 
you know, like how do we create that, you know, how do we build, uh, how do we build that emotional intelligence in our children to understand that if you want to go up the ranks, if you want to be a footballer, then you need to be the best. You need to be the best, you know, and, and giving equal game time, did they really deserve it? Did they really, you know, work for it? Did they, did they really uh, earn it? I suppose. And, and I think too, you know, the kids, you know, the kids are smart. You know, they know, oh, you know, I might only have to turn up two days, two training sessions and I'll still get half the game. I just want to play with my mates. Yeah. But, you know, and you're right, it doesn't create an environment where, you know, the kids need to be, the play, young players need to be pushed by their peers whether you're under 15 or under 14 or under 13, you know, you need to be pushed by your peers because it shouldn't be a given because, you know, one of the things we learn in life, you know, even throughout your education, John, yeah. you know, you get to your VCE and, and all the children are ranked. That's the reality of where we are. And, you know, for, for some reason, football took a shift because of the fees that, you know, everything is equal and everything is, you know, this utopia that, you know, we're all going to be professional footballers. But the reality is that, you know, the kids have to start tasting a little bit of, you know, hard work and rejection almost at that level. So then they know that, you know, well, if I make it to Johnny's under 20s or under senior squad, I've earned this spot. I got here mm-hmm. because I worked the hardest. I'm, I'm trying to be the best I can. Well, yeah. there are there good points, good points, Johnny, and uh, yeah, great, great perspective on that. One of the one of the um, lighter notes. So, uh, you know, we could talk for hours, but uh, we still have to, like you said, try and do a little bit of work. Yeah. One of the things on a lighter note, this Sunday would have been round five. We would have been playing North Geelong away at North Geelong. Give me your prediction. What would have the result have been? Oh, uh, just um, put you on the spot. I, I, don't know, I, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. You know, <laughs> you know we could have, in round five right now. You know, uh, going away to North Geelong is is a hard, hard task. Is a hard, hard task. Um, but and it's a long drive home if you don't get the points, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we've had a, we've had a few of them. Uh, look, um, our our team this year was was going to be set up to win every game, Rob to try and win every game, you know. Certainly, I wouldn't go there to expect, expect to lose. No, that's right. that's for sure. You know I, mean? I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, no, that's, that's our, right. our North Geelong friends are watching, thinking the same thing. We would have taken the points off you guys, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's good. Look, uh, and, and hopefully, you know, we look, we, it feels like it's been forever, but uh, one of the things I noted is it's only round five this weekend. You know, there's going to be a season. What it looks like, I think there's smarter people than me up up above who are gonna who are gonna try and you know f- formulate or articulate some sort of season. Um, how it looks, I don't know, but um, one thing's for sure, John, that ball's gonna roll again, and uh, we're gonna be there, yeah, helping it along and helping yeah. all the kids. And this is what I said, what I said at the start um, of, of the whole COVID nineteen thing. Like, are we are we gonna hold on to something that? that we know you can't hold on to or how do you want to come out of it, you know, after this, you know, so, so what are we doing? What are we doing to come out of it in, in, in good shape, you know, like, and I'm not talking about fitness wise or anything like that. I'm talking about, you know, emotionally, what are we doing, you know, to come out of it in a better place? Because um, we all need work. We all need work emotionally, Rob, you know, no, very true. Johnny, uh, thanks for your time today. Um, you would have been uh, already at the club by now, probably, uh, getting ready for your Friday night session. But, uh, look, we want to wish everybody in our community, uh, our sponsors, uh, you can see the, the names behind us. You know, thanks for your support. We want to wish all our members who have constantly um, checked in and you know watched our uh, progress uh, on Facebook and who want to be connected. This is one of those times. So we just want to wish everybody a safe and healthy time. Uh, I think uh, we are flattening this curve, uh, like the uh, pollies are telling us. So stay safe and uh, we'll see you on the other end of this. And thanks again, John. Uh, Thanks for your time. Thanks, Rob. Thanks and I look forward to doing this again. We will, we will.
Not 